I really have to be focused on my mindset because, you know, how I define my best is my, I'm my own benchmark. You have to be your own benchmark when you define what it is to be your best. If you start comparing yourself to other people, you know, that's, that you, you don't have control over that. You know, for example, being born without my lower limbs. If I were to define my best as the ability to run around outside in the neighborhood with all the kids, then I would be, you know, very disappointed and a depressed child thinking I couldn't do anything, right? But my best had to be defined as what I can do, how I can stretch my own limits, um, and how I can figure out how to define how far those limits can be stretched and then perform up against those things. So that whole idea and that mindset is something I cultivated for me as a young child, just based on my situation. And I've really had to apply that right now going into this race. Because if I think about all the other people that could make it, which does come into my head, and all that has to happen for me to make it, it's like you said, that is just, that's just too much stress and I'm not gonna be focused on what, need, what I need to be successful. Time to hit the gym, better do it smart. Get your own coach, there where you are. Start the day right, there in your home. With the smartest gym in the world, ready, set, go. Smart panel, smart bar, smart training, there you are. Customizing it right, AI, form advice. Super set will show you what it's all about. It's a total Welcome to the Superset Podcast, episode 26. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. And we're both a little sickly. We are. Getting over it, but... Uh, also... Yes. This is one year of episodes of the Superset. Oh, look at that. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I got you... Um, hang on, it's over here. Uh, here. I got you this. Honey. It's a... Uh, hang on. Batteries. But I brought for those the tonal thing. I brought those down here. It's batteries for the tonal but I, clicker thing. I brought them down here. Oh. Um I got you this remote for the TV. I bought the TV, Tom. Oh. Okay. Would you like my readers? <laughs> no. You those. No, I would happy not. Happy anniversary. <laughs> well, how about you just say happy anniversary? Like happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Woo, uh, one year. Yeah, one year. How about that? So crazy. Uh, so that's that. That went by quick, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess in honor of our one year anniversary, what do you have in store for people this week? Uh, well, we are going to talk all about the new content that uh, Tonal has been putting out. There is a ton of new content. Not to mention, we're going to talk about uh, what's going on with the Tonal team, uh -huh. and because we have we have some new additions to the Tonal team. Oh, like Bobby Brown. And no, it's a different new addition. Um, oh. And uh, then there is, of course, in the news, there's some stuff about the coaches. So we'll have to talk about that okay. as well. Awesome. Well, before we get to all that shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find a podcast, you can find us. While you're there, be sure and follow us so you never miss an episode. And of course, check out our Facebook page, Facebook dot com slash superset podcast while you're there like the page and join the group and uh and yeah there we go so oh yeah and you can watch all these on youtube if you want you sure so can. you can listen to them but you can also watch them on our youtube channel which is youtube.com slash the clip out because that's the name of our other podcast so it all kind of lives under that umbrella so swing on by there and you can watch this uh now in color <laughs> so just last week we yeah. added we added a little color dye yeah. so uh <laughs> so that's all that let's uh let's dig in shall we we shall so allison tibbs had a had a post for people yeah it it really it touched me did it it did um you know this is from a couple weeks ago uh but i saved it because i wanted to mention it on the air uh -huh. um she talked about allison talked about how she was wrapping up that day for filming new content for the tonal and that she had been going through this process where she reviewed like her past workout performances right she was watching them and then she had to go through workshops with producers and doing re she had to do research on how she could like show up with more of her authenticity. Sure. And she talked about how it's not always fun or easy, but it's necessary if you're prioritizing growth and then ask the question, how will you show up today? And that just really struck me because 
you know, when you're a person who's watching these instructors, whether it be on Tonal or any other platform, right? You see the finished product, and you don't you don't see the the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into that. But yeah, specifically, absolutely. you don't see the the vulnerability that goes into it, and and it's not something that I think I would have ever. Um, recognized were it not for the fact that we we do a podcast and so yeah. it's like you put yourself out there and you never know what kind of feedback you're going to get right. sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not but the point, sometimes it's just weird that too but 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 my point being that it just it really really struck a chord with me because because that that is something that you have to do is you have to look at how you're doing in order to grow. And I love that she put that level of transparency out there. It just really spoke to me. So I just wanted to make sure that people got a chance to see that. Yeah, I bet so many people think that they just walk in and start hit, saying, hit, lift, lift this, bend here, touch that. Hit record and go. Yeah, and it's just, <laughs> it's, it's just not that simple. It's not that simple. I assure you. <laughs> New tonal content. Well, we say it every week, but uh, tons of new content. They just keep pumping out the content for you. They do. And there are some really exciting ones to talk about because they're special this week. Um, so one of the ones that what I want to make sure and mention is a brand new program with Coach Francis. Why do I want to mention this? Well, specifically, I want to mention this because it is her first strength program on Tonal. Oh. Coach Francis has taught other classes, but this is her first program. So that is very exciting. It's called Fit and Focused. It's a beginner three times a week for four weeks. Uh, so make sure that you get a chance to check that out. Um, and then we have another great class. This one is with Coach Liz, Posture Checkup. So this is great for people like myself that sit at a desk all day right uh so they've been focusing a lot on this like it goes into mobility and having posture checkups i i love this so it, it's very simple things you can do well and it's not just if you sit at the desk if you think about it because so many people are working from home right now uh, right and so you're so it's it's even worse than sitting at a desk because you're probably sitting on your couch which yeah that's working definitely. on your laptop so you're eat, hunched over even more good point uh and then there's a new intro to bar class with coach gabby um and then that was that that was actually a couple of, of weeks ago, to mm -hmm. be honest. We've had so many, there, there's been so many new things yeah. added. There is another new program, Lean Muscle Mastery. And this one is with Coach Jared. So that is super exciting. Um, and this is also a beginner full body three times a week for four weeks. This is all about getting lean. So, so Tom, when you're done with four weeks of fat loss too, right. this can be your next one. Okay. Uh, and then new yoga. This one is called Cheerful Flow with Coach Nikki. I love that. It just makes me want to do that because <laughs> it says it's cheerful and I can always use some, some cheering up. <laughs> Knock out stress with Coach Gabby, an advanced 30 minute full body kickboxing class. Oof. I think it sounds awesome. And then another new bar class, Leg Day Bar with Coach Francis. And if you're you're not done yet, you're not done yet. But wait, there's more. There is more. Another new program. It's actually a new live class. Now, this one's a little bit different because it's a series of classes that Coach Nicolette did. Um, and they're all the beta ones. So she, work, she works out with you. They're called Power Explosion. So there's a full body. There's an upper body. There's a lower body and a core. What's different about these is that you can take them individually. You can mix and match them and make your own um, make your own program out oh, okay. of it. So you could do you could do these classes. There's four of them, right? You could do them four times in one week and do that four times in a row. Boom, you just got a program. Right. So um, that's that's a great a great way to look at that. Or you could just take them one at a time because they're all awesome. And so is Coach Nicolette. And then we have another yoga class, Body Balance with Coach Francis. And this one is an advanced full body and it's 42 minutes. How about that? That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Tonal and celebs. So it's not quite a celebrity using a tonal, but uh, tonal popped up randomly on HGTV. Yeah, Kate posted about this, Kate Telge, and uh, she m noticed this. As she, I guess she watches a lot of HGTV. Okay. Was, that's her confession. Gotcha. Mine. But she said that this was on No Demo Reno. Okay. And boom, up pops a tonal. How cool is that to 
to work for Tonal yeah. and then see this amazing machine up on a show that you're watching. That's really cool. <laughs> So uh, if you watch No Demo Reno, keep an eye out. You might see a tonal. Exactly. Checking in with the tonal team. The tonal team is expanding. It is. And I am super excited about this particular expansion. Uh, There is a brand new person in our tonal community. Dia or Dia. It's probably Dia. I don't know. It's spelled D-I-A. Dia Woodbury. And uh, she is the new community coordinator. So she works very closely with Kate, uh, who has been our community manager. This whole time we've been part of Tonal, Kate's been running the whole thing, and now she's got some help. She's got a minion. She does. (laughs) She does. Uh, And uh, Daya has a background in broadcast TV. Did she used to work at HGTV? No demo Reno? You know what? You know what? It's it's starting to all come together. (laughs) It's all making sense now. (laughs) Uh, she's also mom to a precious one-year-old baby, and she is the best friend that you would want planning your bachelorette party per Kate. Okay. I, I wasn't so. planning on having a bachelorette party, but now I'm intrigued. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, you never know. Maybe we'll just get her to set that up. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, she's going to be helping Tonal communi- uh, coordinate community events. She will be assisting the community in finding information that you need to be successful on Tonal. And she will be running some of the day-to-day operations of the community. So, Daya, welcome to the team. Welcome to the community as well. Coaches in the news. So we talked a few weeks back about uh, Baloney, a queer male burlesque documentary. And we talked about it because Coach Pablo was involved. Yeah. Yeah. He was a part of it. And they were actually like raising money to become part of like to make this actually right, a get reality. It funded and up and off the ground. And it is official as of June 2nd. It is happening. Frameline has published the documentary on their schedule and uh, Coach Pablo gets to be part of it. So how exciting awesome. is that? Um, and uh, if you are watching this, you would see that uh, Coach Pablo had actually posted this on his um, his personal page. Mm-hmm. And so you can go in and read the write up um, about the entire project i was struggling for the word (laughs) it's like the thing you know (laughs) the thing and the stuff it's all there and the other thing uh so i am so excited that this is happening i can't wait to watch this when it is done it's going to be amazing so congratulations i also see here that there's a documentary about the history of queer comics and we all know what a comic nerd i am so Uh, yeah let's keep an eye out for that there's gonna be lots of documentaries in your future but you love documentaries, so it's right up your alley. But congrats to Coach Pablo and the whole team. Speaking of Coach Pablo, he had uh, some tips uh, for getting through this month's challenge. He did. And uh, that is to... Okay, so so this month, the this particular workout mm-hmm. is... Well, the program, not right. workout. It It's full of like exercises that are meant to exhaust you. That's okay. the whole point of them. But he was getting, Coach Pablo was getting a lot of feedback that people were like, okay, but I'm getting exhausted <laughs> on like the second exercise. I'm getting too exhausted. Yeah. And so they were like getting to the point of exhaustion on their muscles early on in the program, which was not the intent. Right. Um, and so... So Coach Pablo was talking about the best way to do this is to turn on the actual advanced mode. Um, I am totally blanking. Spotter mode. Okay. Burnout mode. Excuse me. Those two are very similar, but it's burnout mode that you want for this. Okay. Um, And so what burnout mode will allow you to do is as you're struggling, it will lower the weight one pound at a time. Gotcha. So he highly encouraged people that were struggling to use that. And I wanted to make sure that that we use this platform to tell people as well. I'm sure he reached a lot of people. Sure. He probably reached more people than we did. But but still, I want to make sure that they get the word out. Cast the net wide. Exactly. I mean, that is that is an important piece of advice because you want everyone to to be successful and finish their workouts. Absolutely. So Tonal uh, continued their Tonal Transformation series, this Mm -hmm. time spotlighting Adam Pruitt. Yeah, and um, so Adam Pruitt, he actually tore his ACL uh, during a skiing accident. Okay. And he thought that he was in store for a life-altering surgery. Right. So he connected with an expert physical therapist who suggested aggressive physical therapy and strength training for his injury. Gotcha. Uh, so a couple weeks later, he gets the tonal. It's complete. You know, his installation was complete. And uh, it, it just seemed like fate. So now tonal became part of his... 
recovery. Not only that, um, he he was able to heal his body without surgery. Wow. Like zero surgery. So as he has consistently worked out, he has found confidence and he has found joy in strength training for the first time. And uh, you can hear his entire story uh, in the tonal transformation, either read the story or make sure you go back and listen to the Instagram live interview that occurred in June. What a fascinating story. Yeah, that's pretty impressive that like he avoided a surgery mm-hmm. like that's those are things you typically want to avoid. Yes, absolutely. And then you just wanted to spotlight something that uh, Michelle Kenyon Young said that kind of struck a chord with you. Yeah, um, I did. And, you know, Michelle is always posting really great information out in the tonal community. So uh, pretty much anything you read by her is going to be fascinating. But uh, she shared that she had this aha moment a couple weeks ago. So she's really been focusing on form in her movements. You know, mm-hmm. she's come a long way with her strength score. She's gotten really stronger. Uh, we interviewed her and right. we got to hear some of that. But But as she's been working on the form, she has realized that when she's working on the bigger compound movements, you know, the hard ones, she kind of just powers through that heavy weight. And so that means that sometimes the wrong muscles are doing a bulk of the work. And as she's been really focused on, I'm going to get this form right, she's been trying to think about, okay, well, I want to make sure I'm feeling the consistent glute and hamstring engagement in the lower body movements like she's supposed to well she hasn't been feeling that she also was struggling with the advanced five by five when she was doing uh barbell deadlifts they were hurting her back at the heavy weight that she was working on so she started having private one-on-one sessions with nicolette coach nicolette to work on her posture correction and when they met recently they actually worked on michelle's deadlift form so when Coach Nicolette had her work with the barbell at a similar height as the tonal barbell, like in in a mirror. Mm -hmm. Uh, She actually saw that like her hamstrings weren't very flexible and her spine wasn't neutral the way it was supposed to be. Her back was curved and that's why it was doing all the work during those deadlifts. Um, And so therefore, Coach Nicolette said, you know what, based on your body, you actually need to raise the tonal arms up in height by one click, which when they did, fixed her form. Oh, wow. And so I wanted to highlight this for a couple of reasons. One, how important form is. Right. And and two, that when you are struggling with a move, do not be shy about reaching out to these instructors. Yeah. You, know, you might need to do a couple of, of one-on-one and you might need to pay a little extra, but look at what that can do for you. Yeah. And also that, you know, the maybe the recommended height for some the arms sometimes isn't written in stone. Like exactly. Not everybody's the same height. So the, the, I mean, I know I've done that sometimes when they go all the way at the top and you're supposed to reach down and I'm like, well, I'm too short. I to can't reach, reach that. that. So I'm like, I can go one click below all the way and I'm you know, now I can reach it. You know, exactly. So I've, I've made those adjustments just kind of instinctually. Exactly. And so which how do you, you know, it makes you think about which ones you're not doing instinctually that you right. could be doing totally. to improve and you don't even know it's an option. So just wanted to to make sure and highlight that because I thought it was a really important message. Absolutely. And thank you to Michelle for for sharing, for sharing that. that. Yeah. Checking in with the Tonal Community. So joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Travis Gertner. Hey, Travis, how's it going? Uh, it's fantastic. It's Friday and sunny in Seattle, so I can't complain. Oh, that's awesome. You don't get a lot of sunny days in Seattle, yeah. do you? No, I mean, in the it's summer one. we do, but uh, it, we don't call the summer uh, after the 4th, till after the 4th of July. So, uh, you know, right now we still get a lot of cloud. <laughs> so it's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> like we do during the summer, but the summer is from July 4th to July 9th. <laughs> so, exactly. Right. So summers are fantastic here. They're just like a day yeah. or two. Yeah, <laughs> just, just a 36 hour wait. <laughs> yeah. That is exactly right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so I would like to hear how you first came across Tonal in your adventures and like where in the timeline was that? Yes. Yeah, so I, um, one of my sponsors, Life Fitness, I was actually at dinner with their CEO at the time. And he knew about uh, Tonal and he knew some of the starters and it, and he basically said, you know what, for your training, Travis, Tonal would be perfect. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Tell me, tell me about Tonal. Um, and this was three years ago now or two, two years ago. 
And th- the reason he said that is because, you know, I'm, I'm missing my lower legs. So okay. I was born a congenital double amputee. Uh, I can still get up and move around, get on benches and things like that. But I, I have a lot less balance right, than a normal person where they can use their lower legs to sort of stabilize themselves for all different types of exercises. And um, so, frankly, tonal was perfect. A, um, I can get into new positions with tonal that I couldn't before. Because you think about me lifting up dumbbells without the balance, I can actually push more weight in an exercise than I could get to the point to actually do the exercise. So think smart buttons, right? Smart buttons. I can get into position, any position that I need to without any weight. So now I'm doing exercises I couldn't do before. And I'm doing them with more weight because um, before I, I was al- almost limited by how much I could get into position. So that was the, wow, that was the first thing. Um, yeah. And just the overall spotter effect of it with, you know, again, without enough balance, I could get myself into trouble if I have too much weight on. Yeah. And I might be yelling around for somebody in the gym to come and give me a spot. Uh, and so I would often kind of, you know, back off a little bit because I didn't want to be that guy. Uh, so total with the sp- spotter function was fantastic. So he told me about those things and I thought, oh my goodness, yes, th- this is something I, I absolutely have to have. So I looked into it more, uh, did some emailing and uh, the, the rest is history. Obviously there's more to that story, but uh, it, it's absolutely perfect for me. Wow. Okay. So like to give people a little bit of background, you're a two-time Paralympic gold medalist. Now I can't recall, did you tell me that both of those were in paracycling? Both, both of those, those are in wheelchair basketball. Built so wheelchair, wheelchair basketball. basketball back in the day, yes, when I was a little bit younger and able to recover a little more from workouts, um, <laughs> I did uh, the Athens uh, 2004 Paralympic Games and the Sydney 2000 Paralympic Games. Um, so now, to your point, now I'm actually trying to go back a third time in a new sport uh, of paracycling this time. Wow. Okay. So what made you change sports? Like, was it because like you're getting older and like it's a different energy level or was it because like you just wanted to do a whole new sport? Have like, you was- ever seen no uh wheelchair basketball well no they, i haven't they, actually. i mean there's a documentary about it co- very famous called murder ball oh okay like, well then that's pretty cutthroat. intense pretty <laughs> intense there yes i, I would say it, it is, there's a little bit of both there um one i retired after athens in 2004 from from international sport i wanted to focus on my career i wanted to focus on having a family and so um but i always stayed physically active so one way for me to stay physically active was something like a hand cycle but i, I did it, you know in the summertime twice a week just kind of uh just to, to stay fit uh and then probably 2016 ish um I started to, you know, that competitive bug sort of came back. I'd been focusing on my career and um, that was going well. Things with the family were going well. And just, I'm a competitive person. And all of a sudden, I, you know, how, how, well, how could I improve myself on the hand cycle? And so I really wanted to figure out what, was, what would be my best in the hand cycle. I kind of figured out that before with basketball, tried how to define what my best was, was going to be in, in the hand cycling. And I said, well, let's just take this one year at a time and see if maybe I could go back to the Paralympics. And, um, you know, talking to my wife about it at first. And she said, I thought, you know, when we got married, you said you were done with all of that. And I said, that was basketball. <laughs> that was basketball. This is a different sport. Uh, <laughs> but to that, I mean, basketball, the team sport required a lot more of your time. Uh, you'd have to go for six to eight weeks prior to the Paralympics as a team to train. There was often staging camps throughout the year where you were gone for a long period of time. Hand cycling takes a lot of time, but as an individual sport, it was easier for me to fit that into my schedule and really try wow. and make sure that I could get the training that I need. So um, that's kind of why I transitioned. There was, there was also a bit of a tie there in that my coach in, in basketball always told me, you think better and you're more focused when you're going fast. And so th- I, they would put me on a full court press even when the rest of the team wasn't. I'd be a one-man full court press because the team did better. They were more <laughs> cohesive when I was just moving quickly. And so the whole idea of speed and hand cycling really does fit sort of my national persona as well. <laughs> well, that's fascinating. Yeah. What, and, and also, I have to give kudos to your coach for recognizing that and finding a way to, to completely make best, the best use of that. That's, it, it, that's right, not yes. everybody would pay attention to that. They would like Agreed. try to conform you to that spot instead. Yes. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> So you're going, you're preparing for Tokyo and, uh, what, so tell us about that process. What does it look like? We, I know everything, like every country is a little bit different. So what is, what is the like finals look like for, um, for America whenever you're getting ready to go in? Yeah, it's, it's a complicated process. I'll try to 
keep it as simple as I can. In, in paracycling, there's 15 different classes of disability. So we don't all compete against everybody because, you know, when you've seen one disabled person, you've seen one disabled person. We're all very different. And it would be unfair for me to compete against somebody who is more severely disabled, for example. Sure. So they classify us into these different classifications. Some are on hand cycle, some are on a regular bike, and some are on actually a bike with three wheels. And um, so what happens is they've only got, you know, to simplify, they only have seven spots, but there's 15 classifications. So at the extreme, if we had, you know, the world champion in all 15 spots, we can't all go to the Paralympics. Ah. There's only seven spots. Ah. So what they do is they uh, make it, they, w- there's, there's going to be a race in Minneapolis where they're going to basically adjust our times based on a factor that they come up with that sort of equalizes the playing field between our, uh, between our classifications. So we're competing against people to make the team that we wouldn't compete against once we get there because we only compete in our classifications once we get to Tokyo. So it's a, it's a rather complicated process. It's pretty, pretty cutthroat and tight, given there's only seven spots going. Yeah. Um, but there was a three-step process. We were in Huntsville, Alabama a few months ago to start that process. Then a team was selected from there to go to Belgium. So I was in Belgium uh, until about a week ago, where we competed in Belgium. And then the third step now will be in Minneapolis in a month. And um, there will be uh, basically five spots awarded in Minneapolis based on that sort of whole ranking list idea of factorized times. So one wow. race to rule them all. It's going to be really, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be an intense day. Wow. I bet. How do you, um, how do you not like let that get in your head? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that is the question right now. That is the question. And, and up until a few weeks ago, everything was fine. Um, but now I'm really focused on my mindset. I really have to be focused on my mindset because you know, how I define my best is my, I'm my own benchmark. You have to be your own benchmark when you define what it is to be your best. If you start comparing yourself to other people, you know, that's, that you, you don't have control over that. You know, for example, being born without my lower limbs. If I were to define my best as the ability to run around outside in the neighborhood with all the kids, then I would be, you know, very disappointed and a depressed child thinking I couldn't do anything, right? But my best had to be defined as what I can do, how I can stretch my own limits, um, and how I can figure out how to define how far those limits can be stretched and then perform up against those things. So that whole idea and that mindset is something I cultivated for me as a young child, just based on my situation. And I have really had to apply that right now going into this race. Cause if I think about all the other people that could make it, which does come into my head and all that has to happen for me to make it, it's like you said, that is just, that's just too much stress. And I'm not going to be focused on what, need, what I need to be successful. So I know my numbers. I know my wattage numbers. I know what I need to do and what's under, under my control. And I'm really focused right now on becoming my own personal best for that race in Minneapolis. And when I get to race day, it's all about what I can do versus what I, you know, versus how those limits that I've stretched and defined. Wow. That's a great outlook. It is amazing. Yeah. I think we could all use a little of that every day. Or like a lot. Our... Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I was fortunate to learn that lesson early, just being born without my limbs. And if I were to compare myself to the neighbors running around with two legs, then, you know, it would have been a pretty depressing life. No, yeah. that's true. Like, it is, and, and, yeah. but, but that it, you're fortunate in that you're wired in a way that you can that you can turn it that way, right? Like not everybody can have that positive outlook, whether it's a, about a disability or, uh, you know, height, right. whatever, uh, right? You know whatever, what I mean? so exactly, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and it's not something you just, you know, it's not a switch that you turn on and stays on. <laughs> it's something sure. you have to constantly yeah. remind yourself of because there's so many pressures in this world, obviously, from just appearance and what the world thinks you should be. For example, growing up, the school system. So I, I'm missing all of my left leg and half of my right leg. So what I did when I was younger was they actually gave me a prosthetic leg for the half, for a half a prosthetic leg on my left side. So I basically had two half legs and I was, you know, it's pretty wobbly cause I had no knee and it was really inefficient, hard for me to move around. I didn't like it. I liked the wheelchair. The wheelchair gave me freedom and independence. Yeah. Much more efficient to move around than those prosthetic legs, given the fact that I had no knees, but the, the pressure from society for me to walk, the pressure from the school system with my parents telling them I should walk and not be in a wheelchair was was pretty high. And I and, and I listened to those messages from people around me of what I should look like or what I should do. 
my goodness, my life would be much less efficient. <laughs> I'd be a lot slower. It'd be a lot harder to get around. It would look a lot more clumsy and I wouldn't have the independence that I have today. So, I mean, the wow. pressure from people around you to, to look a certain way, conform a certain way, to do things a certain way is huge, but you really got to look inward and figure out what, what that looks like for your, own, for your own self. Yeah, I guess that's kind of like a, a you know, a, a, an able-bodied bias kind of mm, baked in then, right? Like, yes. you, you know, you, your first instinct is to define success is like not using the wheelchair. Right. You know? <laughs> yes. Where it's, yeah. you know, in a way it's almost like saying like, well, if, if you want to put these hammers in this wood uh, or put this nail in this wood, how, you know, the real, the real successful way to do it is without a hammer. Like, right. you, know, you know, like right. it's, it's, it's a tool and, and some people need the tool and some people don't. And when it comes to hammers, everybody needs the hammer, but right. <laughs> so maybe the analogy is breaking down, but I know you what you're saying. You I get you like, good place, Tom. <laughs> you did, you did, but I, <laughs> <laughs> it may, you know, you're, you're, I, I'm with you. I, I agree 100. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so, very nice of you. <laughs> so, uh, so what was there a moment where, when you were just like, "Hey, f you," I'm using the wheelchair. Did you have to put up a fight, or was it just kind of, it just kind of you spent started spending more time in the wheelchair versus versus the legs, and 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 or you know how that map out. It, it started out with um, me bringing the chair to school uh, and using it for, you know, physical activity within gym class, for example. Mm -hmm. And I would keep my prosthetic leg on, but I would sit in the chair for certain activities. Then it evolved to, wow, I mean, why? It's even awkward to have that leg on while I'm in the chair. So then I would start taking that leg off and sitting in the chair and move a lot faster. Then it got to the point where I stopped bringing that leg to school. <laughs> <laughs> You just eased them into it. I yeah. just eased them into it. And then, you know, there was conversations with my parents, I'm sure. But my parents didn't even have to bring it to me because they knew what I wanted. And it wasn't, it wasn't even a conversation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, to, to me, it just seems like however you're navigating the world better, that seems like the choice. That's the answer. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, so kind of getting back to, to tonal, I know you mentioned like one example of a way that that's, that really works well for you, but um, specifically, like, are you able to use it to get stronger and, and literally prepare for, for your Olympic journey? Yes, I, that is had a huge role. And I've made significant gains since moving over to Tonal. Um, part of that is, you know, for paracycling, you're really looking at trying to have power. Everything is measured, at, measured by wattage, right? You're, you're wattage for a certain time. And so it's all about that power, not necessarily about building up bulk, um, but I'm trying to build up power. And with functions like the chains function on Tonal, for example, or just, just the way the general digital weights work, I can really, really push on that to get explosive power in the concentric movement and not have, you know, for example, if you try that with cables at a gym, you're just going to toss those things up in the air and then you got to kind of grab them at the end. Uh, or even with weights, for example, it's really hard to get that, you know, explosive power. Um, so tonal works very, very well for that kind of thing, focusing on the concentric and really pu pushing out with explosive power. And we've been able to put some really nice custom workouts together to, to work on that specifically. Wow. So are other para athletes using tonal or is this kind of your little secret? It, like, you know, <laughs> it was my little secret and I was trying to keep it a secret as long as I could, but uh, I think the cat's out of the bag a little bit. Yeah. So there are, <laughs> there are a few others, uh, you know, friends of mine on the team um, that, you know, I've just been so excited about, I can't stop talking about it. And so they see that. <laughs> and, um, and so there, there are a few others on the team now that do have one. Uh, one of the coaches actually has one now as well. And so the word is out. Luckily, it's just out domestically. And so if Total can keep that whole, you know, no international shipping thing to, to uh, its current state, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Oh, that, that amuses me. I've never heard, I have never heard such a good rationale for yeah. not shipping over. For not shipping over <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, next time somebody, next time somebody complains about no international shipping, we could just be like, Hey, you listen, know, America, America, <laughs> That's right. America. Absolutely. That's USA. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was going to be like, why do you hate America? And then I'm like, oh, because they're Canadian. <laughs> That's not going to resonate with them at all. Tom, right, stop. Yeah. You're going to start an international I incident. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
but how how do you find the time to balance like working on getting stronger with working on uh or I'm sorry working on your power versus like just the time doing the cycling like how do you make all that work it uh you know doing it at this phase of when I did it before I wasn't quite I wasn't working yet or, or just started my professional career in my second Paralympic journey you know I wasn't married I was single a lot. I mean, I'd hate to say it was easy because it was not. But right now, balancing being a father of three with having a full-time corporate job and getting in the hours that most professional athletes get in, it's just it's much more of a focus on efficiency during my day. Nutrition, uh, recovery has become so much more important. Um, just daily recovery, whether it's you know hammer massage with a Theragun, whether it's foam rolling, whether it's going in to get a massage once a week versus all, you know getting the right amount of sleep. And just being really diligent about that, um, I've really had to work as more work more on that that balance. You know, waking up in the morning, sitting down, doing what gets me focused, which is sitting down and doing a Bible study, and just getting my mind focused on where I want it to get focused on. And this the day, I just have to be efficient. If I'm going to work <laughs> and be able to get my second workout in on the total, then I need to work through what I, my my day job in an efficient way so that I'm able to show up and, and do that, and then be at the table with the kids and be present with the family at night. Um, so much more focused on efficiency in my, in my general life and then placing the tonal within my, within the actual workout schedule. Um, you know, my, both, I have my cycling coach in, um, contact with my total coach, which is coach Nicolette. Um, she does my, my custom builds every month. And so That's those two talk, um, and they talk to make sure that we're designing sort of the periodization that coach Nicolette puts together is in tune with what my cycling coach does. And even within the week, it's, it's kind of, it's making sure that I'm, I'm only focusing on either high intensity interval training or tonal. So on the days I do high intensity interval training on the bike, I'm not on the tonal. But then the next day between high intensity interval training, I'm on tonal when I'm just doing maybe, an, you know, an hour and a half endurance ride, for example, that'll be my tonal day. And then same thing, you know, as we go throughout the week, sort of alternating those two things. Um, so it is a balance. Um, and I think we work through it quite well. Wow. How, how many hours a week are you training? You know, probably about, depending on the cycle of the season, 12 to 14 hours a week. Okay. Right. That's a lot. Um, so uh, you decide to go back to, to, to be a Paralympian again, and you're doing all this, you know, extra workout time. Once you really kind of got a lot of workouts under your belt, you're back in shape. Did your wife come around? Was she like, oh, okay. My My wife is, yeah, she is an absolute saint. I mean, she has to take on a lot of extra work, obviously, with the three kids if I'm traveling with the team. Um, My employer has been super supportive. I used to travel, I was averaging 100 flights a year for work. Uh, And when I wanted to get into this, obviously, that needed to, you know, be relaxed if I'm going to get my training in. So my employer came around and was super helpful. And that my wife was very grateful of that to just reduce my travel schedule by a lot to allow me to be at home more with the family. Um, and so that, you know, that gave her the, a better balance uh, with, you know, being able to cut back on work a little bit while still getting the support from my employer and be be around with the family. So uh, we're making it work. Everybody's kind of coming together to try and get the right level of support. You can't do this kind of thing alone. <laughs> That's totally. awesome. I was going to ask about your employer because I'm like, there's clearly a lot of travel associated with it. When you go to Tokyo to compete, knock wood, that, yes. you, get, that you get to, I don't want to jinx it. Um, right. like how long would you have to be gone for a trip like that? That Is one's like going to be days? tough. No, yeah. that one's, it's probably going to, it's, we would stage beforehand in the U S somewhere very hot because Tokyo is going to be hot and humid. So we would do two weeks of heat acclimation in the U S in August. Wow. Then we'd come home for a week and then we'd go to Tokyo probably for hopefully only three weeks. Um, there's going to be, you know, some COVID restrictions and things like that that aren't completely defined yet in terms of how early we need to be there to sure. quarantine. Um, so I'm hoping it's no more than three weeks because even three weeks, it can be very difficult on the family yeah. um, to have to do that. Absolutely. So I'm curious about the heat acclimation thing. If you go somewhere to acclimate for two weeks and then you come home for a week, won't you then be unacclimated? No, actually, they, they're, they're, we have, um, have a physiologist on the team that I talked to. And of course, they're helping us with the broader team efforts as well. But once you do that for a, a good period of time and you're actually acclimated from there, you can actually just do one or two se- sessions a week to maintain it. It doesn't go away. 
Um, they've done a lot of studies on this. Wow. Um, and so if I do two weeks of it and I come home, as long as I have one or two sessions in that week before I go to Tokyo, I'm not going to lose any of that acclimation. That's fascinating. Yeah, I would not have guessed that. That's, <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. It has nothing to do with the, the heat in your general day. It has to do with the heat, you building up your core body temperature to a certain, certain temperature in an actual workout setting. So you, you build it up, you hold it for whatever it is, 60 minutes or so, and then that's when your body adapts, and then you want to cool down as fast as possible. Huh. Wow. But yeah, that's so counterintuitive. It I is. never would have guessed that. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it just doesn't seem like it would make sense. And so it, I, I know there are scientists saying the other thing, but I'm just going to choose not to believe it. That's what <laughs> no, no, right? no, no, right? no, no, is that not how works? Stop it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's that I is up to you. It does, doesn't change the science, but it's up to you. <laughs> I feel like I on YouTube that made a really convincing case. There right? were slides and everything. Do you do you have to like worry about your humidity though during that that week you're home? Like when you're doing that workout, do you have to like keep the humidity at a certain level? The, the, that'll be part of it too. Yep, that will be part of okay. it too. Okay. Absolutely. Because Tokyo is going to be a mess, and then there's going into that as well as your cooling strategy. So even months before Tokyo, we'll work on our cooling strategy because not everybody cools the same way, whether it's a cooling vest, whether it is, you know, uh, ice slushies, you know, all those types of things that we're gonna have to figure out how my body responds best to so that when we get to Tokyo, you know, while I'm warming up, getting ready for races, all those kind of things, we want really want to work on that cooling as well. Wow. Lots wow. to think about. Yeah, lots to also, think about. Uh, have, they have to do sensory acclimation. They're installing 400 flat screens in his home just to right. constantly flat <laughs> them. So it looks like tokyo right that's yeah can, can you even get there I, I haven't been in tokyo for over 20 years I, I went there for a basketball tournament once and i that was that's what it was like then <laughs> so i don't even know i can't yeah. imagine what it's like now <laughs> yeah i all, all i know about tokyo is what i see in anime so <laughs> right right it might be it's gotta be the lot. same right it's gotta be the same <laughs> Yeah, sure that's, that's legit. Like like that YouTube fella, you know, right? It's totally legit. It taught yeah. me all my science. Oh, so, what was your absolute favorite feature on the tonal? My absolute favorite feature on the tonal, definitely the smart buttons, because that gets me into new positions. Uh, it's getting me to do things like core, core exercises. I could never do core exercise. I didn't have the balance to, you know pull pulleys around to get into spots. And so I'm doing, I'm, I'm working muscle groups that I couldn't even work before. So that's just, to me, it's just been fantastic and, and so exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I also love the AI as well. Just, I don't have to write down my weights. I mean, I, that, that just gets tiring. I tried so many apps in the gym to say, okay, what did I lift this day and how do I feel and all that kind of stuff, right? And then you, you just kind of get stuck. You get stuck because you, you don't remember what you did or you're not, you don't want to go up a full five pounds. Whereas right. total, well, all right, the AI is going to increase me by one pound. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> and you know, that helps you from getting stuck in those ruts. And I love that. It's probably my second most favorite feature is just, it's, it's tracking my weight for me and it's moving me up in small increments so that I can actually get off of those, those plateaus a lot faster. I have to say that is absolutely vindicating to hear somebody at your level say that like somebody is fit and works out as much as you do because um we say that all the time but yeah. there are people that are kind of a little like uh skeptical of it because it's like they've worked out in the gym they've done you know they're they're heavy body weight lifters or whatever and so they're right. like it's not that big of a deal so to hear somebody at your level with the strength that you have say i don't want to write it all down i feel very vindicated <laughs> <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> that was not a workout to a home workout. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All those pieces of paper everywhere. You got to pull up the app, and if you forget to put it in, forget about it. I mean, it's forget gonna about everything. it. Right. That's exactly <laughs> right. I, yep. I love how like this piece of equipment allows you to do something that 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 you weren't able to do before, and you know, it right. reminds me. This is going to sound weird. This interview kind of reminds me of. So we have a, another podcast called The Clip Out, which is about like similar to this, but about um, Peloton, right? Yeah. And okay. when yep. one of the, our earliest interviews, we interviewed a woman who was an Orthodox Jew. And and one of the things that she enjoyed about Peloton is that their modesty restrictions, if she goes to the gym, if it's co-ed, mm. she had to be basically covered head to toe. And uh, that's an awful way to exercise, right? Yes, and it's right. just this unintended consequence of the Peloton uh, uh, that you could do it at home. And I feel like Tonal's kind of in the same boat. Like, I don't think when they built it that they were probably like this will help paralympians 
but but here's but this here's amazing this amazing benefit. unintended <laughs> consequence of this yes. device. Yep, that's uh, I. It's not a question. I just, I just found yeah, it. Yeah, no, it is. It's great. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting to see. Yeah. I, uh, can you explain like, um, like maybe one of the exercises that you do that's custom that, that you wouldn't have been able to do? I know you gave a couple of examples, but for people who are, are like thinking about the tonal and they can't quite visualize like being able to customize a move exactly for them, I'm just looking for kind of a visual. Is that, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think so things like core, for example, where I'm, I'm either I'm, I'm pulling on that pulley somehow for me before I'd have to carry the weight over and getting into that position just just wouldn't work. Um, we do a lot of other things, too, just based on my body not having lower limbs. Um, so, for example, where when, when I'm doing like a um, seated row, uh, I can't just because I've had this half a leg. So it's not it's not really efficient for me and my body to be pushing up with just my half leg and have all that weight. Cause now all, all your weights on one side, it's asymmetric and that's kind of limiting you know, how much I'm using both sides of my lower back. And so of course, Nicolette and I have a, you know, I've got this, this, this bench back here that you can get on the incline. So basically I lie on the incline with my forehead on it like this and reach down and grab the, you know, the tonal handles from the ground. And I'm able to do that seated row um, where I'm not getting all of that sort of, you know, inefficiency and asymmetry going on uh, in, in how wow. the muscles are being worked. Yeah. So this, and then this, who, who kind of susses that out of what makes the most sense? Is, is that something you come up with? Is Nicolette, is there a, a third party? I, I came up with some of it, but most of it, you know, I, I was in a rut too after just using tonal myself without a uh, coach for, I don't know, six or nine months. But then, you know, I, I heard coach Nicolette on, a, on a, I think it was a, a tonal talk or something like that. And I just said, wow, she's really creative. She's thinking about things that I don't think about. Maybe I need to have a conversation with her. And so, yeah, she was very quick. We did that initial sort of video assessment so she could tell what, I can and can't do and where my limits might be. And she was very quick to come up with exercises that I hadn't thought of at all uh, that, that are definitely not on the tonal screen because I'm doing it much differently, but she was able to, you know, leverage obviously her knowledge of tonal and what my limits were as somebody with a disability to tweak a lot of the exercises in a way that would allow me to do them properly. Wow. That's awesome. Cause yeah, cause I would think that, you know, it's gotta be a little intimidating to, to, to tweak these exercises on your own. Cause if you don't have that background in, in physical training, like you, you could, you could hurt yourself. Agreed. Yeah. Like I said, I did a few of them, but not, not enough for me to have the uh, number of exercises I needed to, to stay fresh. And she really got me there. Wow. That's awesome. That's absolutely exciting. It's yeah. very inspi inspiring too. It's like to, to be able to use the tonal in a whole different way, you know, it kind of opens up it opens up a lot of possibilities. That's it, really cool. Yeah, it really does. Like you said, I'm sure the intent wasn't, maybe it was, but I'm guessing it wasn't for people with disabilities, but what is done for the disabled community and para athletes is opened up a world, a world of new exercises and a world of new things we can do. Awesome. Absolutely. So now do you, do you uh, do any programs or workouts that are like already made? It does. I'm guessing the answer is no, because you correct. Yeah. Be the answer is no. Right. It. Yep, exactly. I'm sense. sure that you could leverage uh, some of them, but you'd have to skip something here or there or on the fly, like you said, be able to adapt. Um, and I get, you know, like might go counterintuitive to some of the, you know, wanting to get through these workouts efficiently. So, um, you know, I have to be more thoughtful about how to adapt in advance. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Do you use any of the other content that's on Tonal? Uh, for the kids, yeah, I let the, 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 some of the workouts for the kids, we get we get them involved for sure. Uh, you know, especially during COVID in Seattle, where it was rainy yeah. for so long, and there's, we needed to get them virtual outside. PT. So yeah. we got exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Some of those some of that program is just fantastic, and the kids love it. So that was that was really a good way to keep them active too, and in a different way. How old are your kids? We have three, uh, six, and nine. Wow. Okay. <laughs> three six nine <laughs> very symmetrical yes it is yeah. it is somewhat symmetrical yes <laughs> so do you have i any... don't think that's what they mean by the rhythm method like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, it, it's gonna remember that's it three six nine there's no more zero <laughs> <laughs> well do you have it
any advice for people who are new to exercise or new to tonal? Yeah, I, you know, you, you read a lot in the tonal because the tonal community is just fantastic. And I'm glad that that's there because that gives people who are just trying to figure out if it's right for them, uh, an audience of people that they can ask questions to. And obviously the, the community is so fantastic that, that everybody jumps in and helps answer those questions um, and encourages people along. I think it's a very encouraging community as well. Um, I think, you know, my best advice is it is easier to use than you think. And um, it's going to be more beneficial. You know, I, when I, a lot of people start to wonder, is it going to replace what I have at the gym? Uh, and for me, more so. I didn't have a gym. Again, given my, my situation, I, got to, I can do more now than I could when I went to the gym. And I think a lot of other people would say something similar. It's like they don't feel the need. They don't feel like they're going to be lacking something that they had in a gym with the, you know, 40, 50, 60 different types of machines. Um, so I think it, it, it really, really can meet you where you are, regardless of where you are in your physical journey, physical fitness journey. Uh, if it's beginners, there's big, great beginner stuff in there and it'll help you move along the way you want to. If you're more advanced and you want to really push it, there's that too. Um, so it really does fit a, a wide variety of users. Wow. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. And before we go, is there somewhere that someone can follow you online, social media, or kind of so they can see if you, if yeah, you we want to, we want to follow your journey. We yeah. know yes, please. Go I would encourage you to do so because the more people that follow, the more, uh, you know, sponsors see that and they, 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 they know sure. that uh, you're out there. And so I, I try to do as much as I can posting about my journey. And that's, that's the best place to do it is on Instagram. So uh, my handle is Travis.Gertner, just my first name dot. My last name is my handle on Instagram. And uh, I post a fair bit, especially when I'm traveling and I'm preparing for main events and things like that. And so that's, that's probably the best way. Awesome. Awesome. Now tell us when, when you're going uh, to the next in Minneapolis, you said it's next month, right? When is, yes. when is it going to be? The race is the 19th. And I think I, I'm leaving on the Monday prior. So call that the 14th of June. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're going to be thinking about you. We'll be Thank watching you. your Instagram. To see, <laughs> see how this all turns out. Please we're do. Yes. For you. <laughs> Please do. I appreciate awesome. that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yes, we do. I, thank you for having me. It was a great time. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. Uh, w until next time, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online at facebook.com slash Superset Podcast. Don't forget you can watch all of these on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash The Clip Out. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in and until next time, keep lifting. Smart handle, smart bar, smart trainer, there you are. Customize, make it right, AI, form and vibe. Super set will show you what it's all about. It's a tonal work. The Superset is made possible in part by support from Tonal.